Hello, uh, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what I have here is a G5 RV antenna still in the packaging. And I got this from Richard at MFJ a couple of months ago. And I've been waiting for my neighbor to uh, help me put it up, because it's got to go up pretty high in the air. And, uh, and I'm not allowed to get on ladders anymore, nor am I allowed to get on the roof anymore. So I have to wait when he has some time to help me set this up. So it's still in the package, and I thought, what the heck? This would be a good time to show it close up before I stick it up in the air, similar to my old one that's been up there a decade. Well, a decade. It's been up there about five decades. And... Um, I try to show it in a video, and it's just, you know, like a little spot in the sky. So, today I'm going to show you, up close and personal, the G5 R, G, G5 RV antenna. Okay? So, here we go. So, let me get all this prop stuff out of the way. Get out of the way. Move him out of the way. Bring this up closer. And, uh, first of all... Let me bring up something on my computer. I've got a illustration of what this looks like when it's installed. And again, this is a G5 RV antenna. It's used by amateur radio operators for transmitting, and it can be used like I do. I use it for receiving. And it's a multi-band center-fed uh, antenna, and it was originally designed to operate on th three halves. In other words, over a half wave leak, <laughs> link, oh, link, no, link, length uh, for 14 meters, which is right in the middle of the band we'd like to listen to. Now that I got that all straightened out, and uh, I'll show, you, I'll show you a picture of what it consists of. Okay, so let me uh, switch back here so I can see my camera, see what I've got here. I don't know what else is going to show up. But uh, this represents two trees that you can string it between. And um, the overall length of the top horizontal piece for this version is 102 feet. So you have to have room to stretch out that 102 feet. Now you can do some things like down here, they show using one tree and sloping it down. The two sides, of course, are 51 feet. And the one that I have up now, that's been up there for 35 years, maybe 45 years, um, this is at the peak of my second story, and then it slopes down like this, to two trees, one in my front yard and one on my backyard, diagonally across my yard. That's how I get all 102 feet stretched out. Not ideal at all. Number one, the peak of this um, should be stretched out. This is uh, a ladder line. That's this big black cable here. That's ladder line used on TVs, um, antennas years ago. Um, that is 32 feet long, so that should be stretched out its full length. And um, so you need like a 40-foot uh, tree or a 40-foot uh, tower pole to put this on. Well, I've got mine stuck on the top of my house, which turns out it's only like 20 feet up in the air at the peak. Whoops, down here at the peak right here. So it's way too long. And in these two ends, I think it says, um, let me just look in the documentation again. Hold on a second, I'll look it up. I think it said, for the oh yeah it says the 
in, ends here should be 25 feet. And I think mine are like maybe 10 feet. So you can see mine is not ideal. Okay. So this is how it should be put up. We should have it. So let's just use this illustration here because that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve and I fall way short. And even though I do, that antenna does a good job for me. So you got these two wires and they're just these are just two copper wires. You string those down from the tree and then you've got this uh, feed point here at the middle, which I'll show you in a second, and this ladder line and at the end of the ladder line there's a connector. Now, mine has a ballum to match um, this is 450 ohms and then your coax is 400 ohms, excuse me, 50 ohms. And I have a ballum to match that that came with mine. This one does not come with a ballum, but it tells you how to make a ballum using some coiled wire. I won't get into that. Okay, and then they, then you take that, go from that ballum to your receiver using 50 ohm coax line. So that's how it works. Okay, now let's look close up, and we're going to take this out of the bag. Try to, hope it doesn't spring all over the place. But it's pretty tightly packed. Okay, so here it is. This is, and I'll just stretch it out. It's all put together ready to go. So these are the two um, links, 51 feet links. It's just copper wire with insulators on the end and then you put uh, some rope or whatever to tie it to the tree so that it doesn't get grounded You use those insulators. So that's that's the antenna part. And like I say, they suggest this goes about 40 feet in the air at a minimum. The higher, the better, they say. So that's that. Now, let me um, I get let me go turn my computer off. It's making noise across the hallway here. Okay, hush. It's telling me that I need to bid on a an item on eBay, but it's already higher than I want to pay, so. I ain't going to bid anymore. So anyway, here is, and let me flip it over, try to flip it over. Well, maybe I won't flip it over. Okay, here's the back side. Okay, and we'll zoom in, get the camera there. Definitely need a cameraman. Okay. Shut up, will ya? Oh. this program. Oh, man. Sorry for the interruption. It's just, oh, these programs take over your whole life. Just put a bid in for this one item and it's like, okay, you're getting out bids. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's like, Shh, I don't care. Okay. Moving on along. Okay. And what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to zoom in. I can't even find the cursor. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm losing it. Okay, now we're zoomed in. The camera's not pointing to it anymore. Okay, this is a little phenolic board. Um, it's used as a tie point, and so that it's a stress relief for these wires that are going to be stretched out in your yard. And then this is coming over the top is this ladder line. That's what they call it. I used on used to use it on TV antennas a hundred years ago when I was in my thirties. Um, so it ties these two wires, the two ends, to this ladder line, two sides of the ladder line. And then you've got this ladder line, which is like 30 feet, and you're supposed to stretch that down, downward, that's down, downward towards the ground and then tie your coax. There's another little piece, piece of uh, phenolic board, not phenolic, whatever they call this crap, board, which has the connector for 
um, a coax cable. So you run your coax cable in here, and before you do that, you need to hook up a ballum to this. Either make one or buy one. Like I say, my old antenna that was given to me by my nephew, I think. Which were, no, I bought it at a, at a ham fest. That's what, that one I bought at a ham fest. It has, it, this part here is actually a ballum. It's all wired in. It's a ballum. So it's got the ballum already. So this one you have to either make, well, basically you have to supply a ballum, which is a matching transformer, um, to this, to your coax. You could actually get away without doing that since you're not going to transmit. But if you're going to transmit, which is this is what it was originally designed for, is transmitting, you need to have that matching transformer um, so that you can match it. Plus, you need a antenna tuner to tune it on different frequencies because this is laid out. The measurements and everything are for 14 megahertz. So if you wanted to tr transmit on 3.8 megahertz, you'd have to have an antenna tuner. So this is my main antenna. Like I guess say this is this stretches out to. Um, 102 feet total. Now, they do make other versions of this where these pieces are shorter in case you just don't have the room. And of course, they work, they're resonant on a higher frequency, such as um, instead of 14 megahertz, it may be 21 megahertz. This one is designed to work from 80 meters, which is about 3.8 megahertz, all the way down to 10 meters. So that's why it's called multiband. Um, so the shorter you ones you get, the higher frequency they operate on. So basically that's what you get when you buy one of these antennas. And I can say the difference is this uh, may be a little different configuration instead of just using this PC board um, in PC board on this end this may may be on a more expensive one might be uh, actually a ballum already wired in like mine is that I've got on my roof but the concept is the same and of course like I say the concept is that you'd have these two legs, you'd have this center wire coming down, which is the black black wire, and then you hook your coax cable to that. So it's fairly, if you go for the 80 meter one, it's big, it's long. When I say big, I mean it's long, 102 feet across. So you need a lot of room. But it, for me, it works very well for a... Uh, shortwave radio receiver. I don't use a tuner because I'm only receiving, so a tuner is not as important if you're just receiving as it is if you're transmitting transmitting and need to balance your antenna to your radio. So anyway, that's the, and it, the MFJ number is MFJ1778, and it's the G5RV. This is the full-size one. They make a smaller one. I think it's true. I don't remember how much it is. I should have looked it up and I forgot. Let's stand by for a second. I'll look it up for you. Ooh, the miracle of the internet. That's antennas. And what was the model number? 1778. 1770. Well, they, the MFJ has a lot of antennas, a ton of antennas. I still haven't even gotten down to this number. 1778. Here we go. It is only, this one is only $45. Now, the one I have, which has the ballum built in and it has a little more fancy connector 
doodad right here. It's, it's, it's encompassed and everything. It's over a hundred dollars. And it's been a good antenna. Like I say, it's about 35 years old and it's seems to still be working fine. But for a lot less, uh, you can get this one from MFJ for, what did I say, $45. And they have the Junior, which only goes up to 40 megahertz. And its total length at the top is half. It's only 52 feet. So it might fit in your backyard much better. And that's $39. So you're getting a bargain when you get the uh, the full size one if you have the room for 102 feet of this cable. So that's the disadvantage. And like I say, take a look at MFJ. They've got a lot of antennas for shortwave listening and other things. And they got pretty good prices. And since, since the design itself is not that complicated, um, it's going to hold up pretty good. You know, some people say... Uh, Say maybe it won't hold up. It's I've seen these installations at other hams site and they've had them for ten or twenty years and still works fine. Now we're talking about Florida, so we don't have the extreme cold and hot, which can of course any antenna that extreme cold and hot can destroy it over the years. So anyway, that's the show for today. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Maybe someday my neighbor will have some free time again and help me to put this up. And then we can do some testing to see how it does compared to my old one. You know, I have no idea how much my old one has deteriorated over the years. I just don't know. But thanks for watching. Uh, as I was saying, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show. Please share. There's a button down below the video called Share. And you can share my videos on other places such as, oh, you know, some of those other places like Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.